so basically um peter schneider and uh, his sister sarah is being like oh howard wasn't political he was he, he was just very empathetic to the human condition which is just like that makes no sense okay so even if you take out the fact Okay, let's say he wasn't, you know, directly pulling from the AIDS crisis with Kill the Beast. Sure. Like, but it still just feels weird to say that, like, oh, empathy's not political when, like, unfortunately, life has kind of proven that it kind of is. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, please tell me how it is that you became a left winger and why. <laughs> You stay on the left, right? Right. You know, why is it that you think everybody should get health care, right? Right. Or, so or why you don't think that health care should be tied to um, employment, right? Does that have anything to do with empathy? I mean, obviously, I, meeting other people outside of my own little bubble in the, like, in the small southern town I grew up in definitely played a big part of that. <laughs> so... Would you say? You're about to say some shit, but I'm just going to take it. <laughs> did, you, did you ever feel as a child that there must be more than this provincial life? Would okay. you say that accurately describes you? Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. You know, I was like, I could, that was the one I could jump on. Yeah. Um, the frame of Clyde de Bell and the romance that doesn't feel queer versus the frame which explicitly, um, basically I'm assuming here is that, uh, let's see, it says, is there a contrast between the frame Applied to Belle in the romance that doesn't feel queer versus the Little Mermaid frame, which is most explicitly access to romance and social inclusion. Well, I mean, like, Ariel is the first trans Disney princess, honey. <laughs> like, I don't know how... I, I mean, the answer to your question is yes. And, like, I'm sorry if it sounds a little bit flippant of me to just, just kind of idiotically say that Ariel is the first trans Disney princess, mm -hmm. but like Ariel is the first trans Disney princess, right? Um, for a second, I was like, oh God, did Mulan come out first? No, it didn't. Yeah. <laughs> that was a long time. Mulan ago. didn't come out to like 97, no. 98, so you're good. Really? Was it that late? Okay, no, yeah. I guess it would have had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always forget just like how, just how fucking recent Mulan really is. Right. Um, but yeah, no, like Ariel, like Ariel's trans, honey. Like she's trans, she's trans, she's trans, she's trans. It's like, is, is it also like in, in assimilationist um, narrative? Um, gosh. That's actually really kind of difficult to parse, right? Right. Um, because it, it's like the Little Mermaid. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever said this before. Someone probably has, but I'm just gonna wing this out into the ether and see what happens. But it's also like a very Austinian kind of a story, um, because you have like, you know, the the dad, and there's like no mom. Right. Right, who is also very doting, but is also very overprotective. And, like, the whole thing about, like, dads in Jane Austen mm -hmm. is that they're all, like, super well-meaning. And they're typically, like, dope characters. Like, the dad and Emma, like, he fucking owns. Right. And, like, kind of, and, like, so, actually, you know what? I think I'm thinking more of the dad in Pride and Prejudice than I am the dad okay. and Emma. But they're very similar, right? Because, right. like, like, they'll, like, they kind of, like, make fun of the mom together. Mm -hmm. in Pride and Prejudice like he kind of has like a sense of humor and he like doesn't take the whole like marriage shit super seriously the way that the mom does but then right. he starts to realize when like the youngest daughter like fucks off he's like you know what maybe I should have taken this shit seriously because now like my family is just off the fucking rails right right and so you kind of do get a bit of that dynamic of Triton mm -hmm. because you can tell that he loves his daughters but he like He's also, like, extremely shitty about Ariel's, like, garbage collection, right? Right. You know? Um, and, I mean, like, who hasn't had their dad, like, rip down a Marilyn Manson poster off their wall, right? Like, right. I mean, that hasn't happened to me, thank Christ. But, like, you can kind of imagine, you know, just, like, what that sort of stuff would have been like with just, you know, 
actually losing your BB Rexa poster like that. Just brutal. Just fucking brutal. <laughs> you know, but here's the, here's the great thing about like pop punk kids growing up later is mm-hmm. like they were super mad when their dads like tore the posters down off the wall. But now they're like, wow, my dad was actually ripping up the image of a pedophile. So it's okay. <laughs> Uh, my dad never did that i just got a lot of i know he about. didn't but i just i needed to carry that image through like trolling you on bb rexa and then just going to the like <laughs> the pop on pedophile joke <laughs> i was, was already right. in college with bb rexa when i first encountered bb rexa so you know i know what? i still have no idea who she is like i just don't know who she is i keep seeing pictures of her and like aquaria beefing with her but i'm just like don't know who she is and i just i like it that way she's just i'm like okay i don't know who you are but you're just it's, there it's probably best that way you know <laughs> she, she's just like wallpaper to me um <laughs> Which is not as mean as, as I wanted to, it's meaner than I wanted to be. But, but the whole thing with Ariel, yeah. So, like, so it's kind of like she has this other place that she kind of like exotifies and like jumps out to. Um, and she like makes this brutal bargain. But, like, it's kind of weird to kind of weigh the two environments, like where she came from versus where she ends up. Right. Because if, if they followed um, Sebastian being Jamaican <laughs> um, to its furthest conclusion, that this is like um, this, this is the Caribbean. Those mermaids <laughs> would not be white. I mean, I don't know. There, there is this like weird. Maybe I like you can you can follow it. I kind of guess, but like people kind of follow this through, and they're like, "Well, like, what if like Triton is like a mermaid colonizer?" <laughs> <laughs> and this kind people kind of get at this with like Ursula, like what's Ursula's whole story, right? Right. And like, where did she come from? Like Ursula's white too, but people have kind of tried to, you know, problematize that whole relationship and like who who's what there. But it's just like, what What if like King Triton is an underwater colonizer too? And then in which, in, in which case you have like, you know, Prince Eric, who's kind of, you know, would have been, I, I guess, like Spanish or something Maybe. Um, up there on the surface. And then down below, then you're like, okay, well, it's not really an assimilationist <laughs> narrative because it's just settler colonialism wherever you are. Right. But if, if, if there was, and I guess this will be interesting if and when that Little Mermaid movie ever comes out. Like, is Eric going to be white? <laughs> yeah, because I don't. Think I can't they, remember if they cast him or not. I um, I know because I know the cast. I can never. Is it Zendaya or Zendaya? Zendaya. Yeah, because she's remember, not playing Ariel. I know. Not, isn't it? Isn't it Chloe from Chloe and Halle or something? Maybe because I I think they were initially looking at her. No, it's her. someone else. No, it's a girl who has a name that makes her sound like somebody that's like close to a famous per like a more right. famous person. Right. Maybe. I could be totally screwing this up again. I'm looking it up right now because I'm like, No, it's on. Hallie of Chloe and Hallie because people are like, Hallie Berry is going to be the... Or, or, oh, or I think yeah. it's a girl named Hallie. I think it's a girl named Hallie. It may not be yeah, Hallie from Hallie Chloe Hallie and Hallie. Bailey. That's yeah. why people were... But is, she, but is she the one with the twin sister? Don't or is she just somebody else? She might be somebody else. No, she's in Chloe and Hallie. So yeah, okay, the, so right. Okay, person. yes. Right. Well, okay, because I, I think I was mixing that up because I think they were looking at Zendaya for. No, it's it's because the, it's because they're on that show. Okay. Because they're on Grownish together. Okay, and then. But I'm sure people have photoshopped Zendaya as as Ariel for years. But oh. anyway, point is, I don't like if if that that's what where you're going to be looking at. But it's not going going to be like is this like a queer assimilationist story, like a trans assimilationist story? It's going to be is it you know her going from like you know black culture into a white one so that's a different dynamic of assimilation right so i I don't know like it's i don't know how to approach that with with ariel with her leaving one environment to go into another as she's transitioning you can have more of that queer reading with the original like hans christian anderson like, oh well, she yes. just gets she just gets turned into sea foam. Um, but right. like she she is trans, right? And and so this is where, to me, I, I think that's the most legible and and the best reading, um, 
of the most productive reading of The Little Mermaid. But that's why I'm like, I don't know why people keep trying to be like, oh, you know, Ursula is is actually the, the hero of this or like the misunderstood anti-hero and like Ariel just didn't fulfill the, the, the contract. And it's like, are you a landlord? Do you have an Airbnb? Because that's the kind of person that you sound like to me when you do that. Because like she's she's like a teenage girl. She's like thirteen years old, and she makes a contract with this adult where she has to like make a dude fall in love with her right. in like a day. Like, I'm not a child anymore. I'm sixteen years old. It's like bitch. Yeah, but it's just like but you can't just take her at her word and then read the entire movie based on that. Because right. then it just it just becomes that Brienne of Starth tweet. Where the whole thing is like, that dude should have read this sign before his kid was like killed by a zoo animal. <laughs> it's kind of like, there's some things you don't need to share. Right. And like, and, and, you know, and Ariel being in the wrong because of contract law. It's like completely one of those things. Maritime contract. This is a child. <laughs> right, maritime law. There you go. Where's fucking Jason Bateman when you need him? <laughs> Oh Lord! You're a crook, Mister Cap- Hook. Is that is that the it's, line? You're a crook, Captain Hook. You're a crook, Captain Hook. I can't yeah. believe I fucking hate that show, and yet, uh, um, yeah, I haven't watched it in years, and yet there's still like, a, yeah. So weirdly enough, Javier Bardem is playing King Triton in the live action version. Okay. And okay. Yeah, I'm just like. Sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's possible. Like, I get it. Like, I get it, but. I, mm, nope. I, if you played like Eric's dad, I'd be like, yeah, lit. Okay. But yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing, you know, with Little Mermaid is that I'm sure they didn't, they, they didn't intend it. Like, I mean, there could be someone out there who's like, yeah, fucking Howard Ashman was down. And it's like, no, honey, nobody was thinking like, this is about trans girls. Because again, like Little Mermaid came out in ninety one in our eighty nine, like three years before the nineteen ninety two Oscars. No one at the Walt Disney Company, you know. But we, which is so fascinating though that really because like the divine thing, it was not divine provenance. Like yes, that was slipping gay shit into this movie. And so I think, like, that's why Ursula is just such a, like, overused totem in all of this. Because it's, like, you go from, like, ooh, the drag queen is the villain. It's Disney telling you the gays are bad. To being, like, oh, Howard Ashman picked that drawing out because he recognized Divine. And then, you know, it becomes ariel's the real villain then if the queer coded character is the drag is you know the drag queen sea witch <laughs> tumblr has two roads oh, yep and you're gonna get hit by a car <laughs> and you're gonna get hit by a car right um and it and it's kind of like you can look at this because like that's the thing with full mermaid is that there is beginning middle and end to her as like a trans story because it's like that's the thing because if you accept that Air, that little mermaid is a trans story you can't accept Ursula as the hero unless you're Jesse Single. Oh. I mean, you're not wrong. Bam. Oh. Bam. Bam. <laughs> Fuck, please read that article about that that poor um I think non binary kid who who got photographed for that awful cover for that awful story and got misgendered as part of an awful story for the Atlantic. Please read up on that and that just whole awful chain of awful. And like, I know that Jesse Single had nothing to do with that cover photo shoot, or at least I assume that he doesn't, but it just kind of shows like, that was the ROGD thing. Like that was the ROGD thing, right? So nice. this is what I'm saying is, is like, so if you read um blown mermaid as a trans narrative you have to understand that 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 ursula is like the trade-offs of what you had to deal with um in terms of like medical gatekeeping and again number one i'm not going to say that anybody at disney intentionally tried to make this a trans story but 1984 to 1989 Mm -hmm. is solidly within an era of trans history and trans care 
that we refer to as the stealth era. So it is perfectly situated mm -hmm. in time to look at Ursula as a medical gatekeeper, right? right? And the fact that Ariel couldn't traded her voice for her legs, honey, 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 it does not get any more black and white than if it was Charlie fucking Chaplin. Right. Or Steamboat motherfucking Willie. It just is what it goddamn is. That's what the stealth era was, honey. Mm -hmm. That That's why, like, even for me, like, it didn't have to take a full 10 years for me to, to get there. Like, informed consent was, was definitely not what it is now mm -hmm. in 2010. And, like, the number of doctors who I could go to in 2010 are not what they are in 2020. Right. But just, like when most of like the like cultural and community knowledge that you hear is coming from the stealth era where it's like bitch you have to tell them x y and z if you want access to any of this bitch you better tell them that you want grs bitch you better tell them that you're that you're you're fucking gay that 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 you you like men you better tell them that x y and z right this is what you have to tell them to get what you want and then, like, that was the trade-off also is that, like, if you look at, and, and this stuff is still online, and it was still the most prevalent stuff online when, like, I was looking for shit in the late 2000s, they're like, bitch, if you're going to transition, don't transition to your current job. You know, don't grow your hair out too long where you're still at your job. Move to a new town where nobody knows you. Like, do some full, like, fucking Yojimbo like fucking Akira Kurosawa, like man with no name, Clint Eastwood type of shit, right? Google Dr. V and the golf thing and the suicide. And you look at like, oh yeah, that's what the stealth era did to people, right? And it's just like, I'm sorry, but that's the narrative of the, of the Little Mermaid, you know? And the whole thing of like the emphasis on like the success or failure right. of like, trans care is can you get and keep a man you know this is the big question about the validity of trans women oh like oh well can they get and keep a man so wild how her transition is tied directly to her ability to make eric fall in love with her and secure something for her wow it almost feels as if we've come right back around to mj rodriguez playing audrey in little shop of fucking horrors bitch <laughs> Ugh. But yeah, let's didn't get to mention the fact that uh, when Ashman was writing um, part of your world, he jokingly referred to it as somewhere that's dry. <laughs> because it's basically the same fucking song. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. 